cabbage is safe and reproducible report on the first thousand cases. Uh, Dr. Joseph McGinn. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm reporting on the first thousand cases uh, of mixed cabbage by Dr. Uh, Mark Ruel and myself. Uh, both the cases were done at the University of Ottawa Heart Institute and at the Heart Institute at Staten Island University Hospital. These are our disclosures. I'd like to start off by saying that I think we have a public health issue in this country and many other countries because back in 09 when this syntax trial was released, I was pretty convinced that, the, uh, that these studies favored coronary bypass and not PCI. And I think one of the most eloquent speakers on this topic is uh, Dr. Taggart, who in his last uh, piece in the Lancet uh, said one of the following, because of its all common design syntax is undoubtedly the most definitive and compelling of all trials of cabbage versus PCI. The investigators estimate that currently about two thirds of patients with complex coronary artery disease are best treated with coronary artery bypass. Despite that, when confronted with either a groin stick or having your chest cracked open. Unfortunately, most or many of our patients are choosing to have the groin stick and our cardiology colleagues are, are performing these procedures knowing very well that the literature says otherwise. The five-year follow-up in the Syntax trial showed a widening uh, a separation between PCI and cabbage and now includes the intermediate score in its recommendation, and almost all categories of MACE show a difference between PCI and coronary bypass. But there was another observation I made in the last publication by Friedrich Moore in Lancet, and I'll quote, despite the joint assessment of patients by the heart team, more than four times as many cabbage patients withdrew consent to participate in the study compared with PCI patients, 50 versus 11 respectively probably because the patients are concerned about the greater invasiveness of coronary artery bypass grafting. I think that says a lot. The sternotomy has been around for a long time, 40 plus years, and the only thing we've done to it over the last 40 years is add the internal mammary artery to it. I think it's time that we, as a group, try to develop a sustainable, diffusible, uh, minimally invasive platform for coronary artery bypass. Thoracotomy-based um, uh, cabbage has been talked about a lot in the literature, over 1,700 publications going back to 1967 by, by Kolosev and uh, JTCVS, and there are 14 specifically on mixed cabbage. The basic layout of the mixed cabbage is three incisions. One is the main incision, so left anterior thoracotomy, about seven centimeters over the fourth intercostal space, or the fifth intercostal space, depending on the anatomy. Uh, two portals, one is in the subxiphoid space, and the other one is in the sixth intercostal space, for the positioner and the stabilizer. This is the basic layout. You can see the thoracotomy incision below the left nipple. And this is a short movie just demonstrating the procedure, how it's done in a few steps. The first step is to harvest the internal mammary using the thoratrack retractor, which lifts up the second, third, and fourth ribs, exposing the internal uh, mammary artery and, and facilitating its uh, dissection. It can be dissected all the way up to the uh, innominate vein and all the way down to the bifurcation on almost every case. It is a short uh, learning curve uh, and very reproducible and safe uh, part of the procedure. Once the mammary is harvested, then the proximal is done on the ascending uh, aorta through several steps. The first step is to displace the interspace north towards the head so that you can get the interspaces closer to the aorta. You could use the rule track to facilitate this movement uh, of the interspace superiorly. After that, the fat is removed from the anterior mediastinal space, exposing the pulmonary artery and the aorta. The uh, pericardium is then opened on the top two-thirds, giving access to the great vessels. Retraction sutures are placed onto the right side of the pericardium to pull the superior mediastinum towards the incision. And then lastly, the uh, epicardial stabilizer is used to push the pulmonary artery posterior and inferior. And this gives greater exposure to the aorta. And this is put through the subxiphoid portal. Suction is turned on, and you can see the aorta come into view. Once the aorta is easy to view, then the dissection is carried out around the aorta along the right, post, uh, right pulmonary artery uh, to completely encircle the uh, aorta. A C-clamp is then used uh, to complete the dissection from the right side of the aorta and a umbilical tape is pulled behind the aorta. 
Once the umbilical tape is behind the aorta, then you could swap it for a one inch packing, which is used as a sling or a strap to bring the aorta a little bit closer to the incision. Once, once the strap is put in place, the epicardial stabilizer is repositioned to pull the fat back out of the way so that you can have access to the ascending aorta. I use either a side biting clamp or a hot string depending on the surgeon's preference or depending on the disease in the aorta. In this particular case, we're doing two proximals. Uh, I want you to notice that I use fairly regular instruments uh, to do the proximal anastomosis, including a, a punch and a needle holder and pickups and 6-0 proline. This is the PDA anastomosis, which comes down inferiorly over the right atrium in a normal fashion as it might be done through a sternal approach. And you can see the PDA coming down inferiorly and the circumflex graft on the top coming off to the left side, uh, traversing over the pulmonary artery as you might see in a, a sternal approach. <clears throat> Once the proximals are done, then the pericardium is opened widely and the ap apical positioner is placed on the apex and the apex can be pushed up to the left shoulder to gain access to the PDA or the apex can be pulled to the right side and the right hip to expose the left sided vessels. This is the LED being stabilized and anastomosis with the internal mammary artery skeletonized is being done through the mini thoracotomy incision. <clears throat> this is the result of the patient who had a quadruple bypass. You can see the three incisions including the main thoracotomy underneath the left nipple. This is a computerized uh, reconstruction of a quadruple bypass. The only reason I show this is to demonstrate that the coursing of the vessels is exactly the same way they would course if it was done through a sternal approach. Um, we have reported on this a number of times. Our last uh, report was involving 91 patients, and it was published in JTCVS, uh, looking at uh, patency. And the mean length of hospital stay was four days. Patients were followed for six months. There were no mortalities, no MACE. And the uh, computerized uh, tomography showed a 92% graft survival for all grafts and 100% for the internal mammary arteries. The cohort of patients I'm reporting on today is 1,038 patients done both, as I mentioned before, at the University of Ottawa Heart Institute and the Heart Institute at Staten Island University Hospital. They're a very typical group of patients. Most of them are male. Hypertension, diabetes, and hyperlipidemia is very common. 9% had previous CVAs. Um, and the, the average ejection fraction was about 43%. Most of the patients had triple vessel disease. Um, the, uh, <clears throat> most of the patients were urgent patients, uh, and there were very few emergent patients. The average graft per patient was 2.2, which is quite a bit lower than the sternal cohort, uh, mostly because uh, Dr. Well and myself get referred a lot of single and double vessel disease because of the fact that we do minimally invasive surgery. Uh, cardiopulmonary bypass was used almost 11% of the time. Uh, the uh, uh, conversion to stenotomy was about 2.6% of the time. This is a table I show just to give you an idea of what vessels we have bypassed through the study, and it goes basically to any vessel, but the most common are the LED, the diagonal, the PDA, and the obtuse marginals. Also, you can see that almost every conduit was used. Uh, but again, usually the LAD, I mean the Lima and the uh, Savage vein grafts are the most common. There were a lot of sequentials done. The sequentials are primarily done through the LAD and the Diag and the obtuse marginals, as you can see from that slide. This is just demonstrating the, the reduction in the conversion to stenotomy over the, you can see in the first 120 cases, it was about a 9 plus percent conversion rate. And at this point, we're at under 1 percent conversion rate. However, the utilization of cardiopulmonary bypass has increased significantly. It's almost at 14 percent to facilitate getting to vessels that are difficult to get to also as a bailout strategy. Uh, we had 30 patients who went back for bleeding. It was 2.9 percent. We had one single deep wound infection out of 1,000 cases, which healed without a plastic surgical intervention. Uh, we had a mortality rate of 0.9% and strangely enough, an uh, AFib rate of about 20%, no different than any other uh, cohort. Late follow-up is about three years and we had about 5% of our patients requiring uh, PCI after the surgery. The overall survival is 96%. In conclusion, I think mix is a, a mixed cabbage is a safe procedure. It's very durable. Uh, and it requires very little expense to get a mixed cabbage program up and running. However, we do need to improve the diffuse, diffusion of it through better training, through improved technology, and possibly through better acceptance from other, other surgeons. I want to thank the ISMICS for allowing me to present this data. Thank you again.